Yeah, that's right. You guys uh, have some drinks. Huh? Let, let loose, baby. You guys are on vacation. You guys are on vacation from all you Europeans. You guys are on one of your, you know, eight months of vacation right now. <laughs> Soak it in, man. You guys got to go back to your four months of work pretty soon. Uh, you guys got it right, let's be honest. <laughs> all right, here's the deal, guys. I, I, you know, I'm not going to beat around the bush. You guys know that I used to be a tour guide. You guys know that I've walked these streets with many a group from, you know, uh, Houston. You know, with the, many a group from Sweden and all those different exotic places. Uh, so I'll go ahead and tell you, I'm gonna give you guys, it's time to do a little tour. Let's do a little tour, huh? How about that? Hello. Oh, listen to that. Oh, hey, look at that. That was me. All right, look at that, that's me too. Hey, isn't that cool? That's me right there. That's a little hot dog. Oh, look at that costume. And the dabbing rat. Okay, cool. Here's the deal. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a little low down of one of the neighborhoods here. We've covered a few here in the, in the show. Uh, we've covered Tribeca. We covered uh, East Village, Lower East Side. We covered uh, Soho. Today, we are going to take a little tour through Greenwich Village, baby. Yeah, let's do Greenwich Village, huh? <laughs> Greenwich Village. This is the slogan right here. Greenwich Village, you guys may recognize it from the Washington Arch, huh? From the uh, old McDougal here, beautiful McDougal. From uh, this lady in front of the, in front of the, uh, you know, Google gives you some weird stuff, okay? <laughs> when you Google, uh, you know, uh, Carrie Bradshaw's mansion, that's what you get. I don't know what to tell you. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about Greenwich Village, guys. Greenwich Village has had its name of Greenwich Village since the 1700s. Well, they say it dates back even to the Dutch when they called it Green Wyke, supposedly, and then it got anglicized to the Greenwich under the British, as you guys know Greenwich, huh? London, neighborhood in London. Any Brits in here? Yeah? You're from, you're from uh, London? Sort of. Sort of? What are you, like a fugitive or something? What's going on? <laughs> are, you, are you visiting too? No. Okay, you live here? 37 years. 37 years, damn. That is how stubborn the English <laughs> accent is, baby. That <laughs> shit. You cannot brush that out. Yeah, that's for sure. That thing is staying put. Well, welcome back. Welcome 37 years. It's been here twice as long as I have. Uh, okay. Here's the deal, guys. This is Greenwich. This was Greenwich. It was all farmland. This was all farmland until the early 1800s, late 1700s. In fact, some of the people who, who lived here, some early, early Irish settlers and escaped and freed slaves lived here on this land that used to look like this. And you may be thinking, oh, that's nice. They had, they had some escaped uh, and freed slaves that were allowed to live outside of the city like that. Well, don't think it was so altruistic. The reason they put them there was because it provided a buffer with the Native Americans from the settlement. How terrible is that? But that's what they did. But they lived here in this kind of land for a little while. Pretty nice, huh? This is actually uh, what the creek would have looked like, what's called, what was called Manetta Creek. Huh? You guys may know Manetta Lane, Manetta Street. That's what it's named after. This here is what you have here. So this is when it started to turn. Late 1700s, the city buys a potter's field, buys us some land here to create a potter's field. Does anyone here know what a potter's field is? Uh, that's right. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's a little dark. It's a little dark. This is where they buried people. I can't tell by these little crosses. That's uh, yeah. They buried people specifically uh, from yellow fever. They buried, there was a lot of yellow fever going around. Uh, a lot of a lot of problems with that. So they buried mass graves. Really terrible. In fact, fun fact. Next time you're on a date in Washington Square, <laughs> you know, drop that little gem. Say hey, you know what? You know what we're walking on right now? Thousands of cadavers. <laughs> are dead people under us. So in all fairness, like, you know, let's be honest, if you ever see taking people taking pictures of themselves in Washington Square, this is actually what they're doing right now. Uh, <laughs> this is kind of, to be, more, to be more specific. So anyways, we talk about here, Greenwich Village, early 1800s, Greenwich Village starts developing because of the yellow fever epidemic and things, right? So you start getting these kind of things. It starts developing, I, I said Tom graduates high school. Yeah, I'm an old man. <laughs> Yeah, no, self-deprecation. Okay, anyways, here we go. So this here was built in the early 1800s, the first quarter of the 1800s, because they started to develop it. People start to move out there, right? People start, this was actually one of the first, like, upper middle class developments built in one shot in the United States history. It's called the Row. Very pretty. I don't know if you guys recognize it. So you have this man. This is an interesting story. Robert Randall, this guy. This guy dies in 1801. He gives a ton of land right here to uh, a trust to build a place for aging sailors. 
Isn't that interesting? That trust is like, oh crap, they're starting to settle up here. We're not gonna build a home for aging sailors. That'd be stupid. So guess what they did? They built a lot of little houses. They cut it up and made nice little, little plots of land. And then they opened Snug Harbor using that money in Staten Island. Do you guys know what Snug Harbor is? Snug Harbor is this place. Very pretty, oh, or on Staten Island, you guys are all like, what is Staten Island? <laughs> what is that? Well, it's one of the boroughs over, over uh, on the other, in the harbor. Uh, yeah, little Snuggies, you guys remember those? That's pretty, pretty cre creepy. Uh, anyways, that's Snug Harbor. That's one of the things. So yellow fever, like I said, yellow fever was a big reason why it got settled initially in the early 1800s, right? So you might see this building when you're walking around. This is called the Northern Dispensary. It's on Waverly Place. It's built in the 1820s, kind of nuts. In fact, Edgar Allan Poe was treated for a, uh, a, a cold there. Pretty cool that the building's still there. Uh, and uh, Edgar Allan Poe, but if you guys don't know, he's, the, he's the, the poet, the writer, you guys know that? He also had a very difficult life. He had a very difficult life. He, you know, he, he buried his, love, his lover. He had a lot of issues with depression, all that stuff. And uh, he was actually born to two struggling and failing actors, as if it couldn't get any worse, <laughs> you know? This is a family portrait right there. Uh, all right. Look at that, that was me. Six years ago, holy sh**, <laughs> gotta open that. Anyways, that's NYU. NYU, look at that, NYU, 1831. It opens in 1831. One of the former treasure secretaries of the United States helps open it, big deal. This brought lots of powerhouse brains to the neighborhood and youthful vigor, huh? It brought a lot of youthful vigor to the neighborhood. So people like Jonas Salk, people like uh, Samuel Morse was a professor here. Very important people, you know, passed through the gates of NYU, right. The other big uh, variable, so you had the rich people in the upper middle class who wanted to get out of the city, you had NYU and the college students, and you had immigrants coming in. Mid-1800s, immigrants start pouring into New York, and they come to New York. You had the Irish here already, then you had the Italians. They have some of the, you know, you have some of the uh, old, I guess, residue. That's a pretty bad way to describe it, <laughs> residue. No, you have some of like the leftover, uh, I guess, influence of those Italians still in Greenwich Village, like, you know, Cafe Reggio, you have some over on Bleecker, you have, uh, you know, uh, Caf uh, Rocco, Pastisseria Rocco, which is a great cannoli, and you guys should check out the cannoli. So it's all because of the Italians. Look at that, there's some, uh, okay. This is how you guys are gonna remember this. <laughs> I'm teaching kindergartners here. So anyways, this is when the artists kind of start to come into where the first signs of big art pushes come in, mid 1800s. One of the first places was a place called Faf's on Broadway. So Faf's opens and it's here on Broadway. This is a little old, I think it's this building here, but people like Walt Whitman. No, Walt Whitman kind of makes his, his uh, debut there and kind of starts hanging out with all, the, with all the intellectuals and everything. And, and there was like a gay subculture there as well. He actually became famous for writing the book Leaves of Grass, huh? You guys know that? Maybe you guys don't, so I'll tell you another thing you might know is that's the book that Bill Clinton gifted to Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> There's some trivia for you. You can take that one home with you, holy crap. So you have artists in the mid-1800s, but you also had another push in the late 1800s, early 1900s. So you had the Civil War, that kind of broke things up. Late 1800s, you start having people come in as well. This here was the Provincetown Playhouse. There's still this building here called the Provincetown because of that. People like Eugene O'Neill, people like Edna St. Vincent Millay made their debut there, and Edna St. Vincent Millay ended up uh, founding the Cherry Lane Theater in the 1920s. Look at all that, all that happening early 1900s. Then you had an artist in the, in the mid 1900s also, another renaissance. People like this guy, Jack Kerouac. Look at that handsome son of a gun, huh? Wearing his tablecloth on his sh as a shirt, I guess. And then you got Edward Hopper, huh? You guys know Edward Hopper? That guy who painted this. You guys may have heard the name Edward Hopper. You're like, who's that guy? Well, he's the guy who painted this thing, huh? Pretty cool. <laughs> and you had Good old Bobby D, look at that guy. Bob Dylan changing the face of music from Greenwich Village. He came here 20 years old and then changed the face of music at 23. Insane. And all of that happened here in Greenwich Village in the mid-1900s. Pretty cool. And then it got expensive. <laughs> you know, it started to get expensive. Let's not, let's not mess around. I'll show you this, this building here on West 10th. You ever get a chance? You want to walk people down a nice street? Take them down West 10th. That's one of the prettiest streets, in my opinion, in Greenwich Village. This is 11. It was a combined townhouse. They combined it into one massive townhouse. Uh, for a very long time, it was the most expensive building sold in uh, Greenwich Village. Guess how much that cost? 45 million? No, actually it's 33 million. <laughs> so maybe it's a deal, huh? Maybe you should, if he thinks it's 45, maybe you can buy it, sell it to this guy. All right, here we go. 
This is actually what it looks like here. This is uh, like they got the whole back. This is insane. It looks like a college campus. They're only for only 33 mil, huh? How about that? <laughs> Let's start saving up. And you get some great neighbors too when you're there. You get some great neighbors like uh, 14 West 10th, known as the House of Death. Another thing for your dates, guys. Walk them down West 10th and be like, hey, you know this building here? This is the house of death, <laughs> you know? There was a book written in the 1970s about how 22 people have died in this building and continue to haunt it. Uh, one of them being uh, Mark Twain. You know that? Mark Twain showed up here and haunted people at this building because he used to, he used to live there. Insane, that would be weird if he didn't. He was just haunting a random building. <laughs> And, uh, you know, and in the 80s, a, a horrible, horrible murder happened here where a man named Joel Steinberg, this guy here, uh, murdered his adopted child. Yeah. And then he, ha he almost murdered his other adopted, they had two adopted childs, he goes to prison for a very long time, and that's the reason they call it the house of death. That's a lot to drop on people. So if you are on a date, I recommend afterwards showing them this picture. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty good, I think. Uh, yeah, pretty nice, right? It's not, not, not so bad. So today, we got billionaires, not millionaires, man, because it's gone up, and now it is at billionaire level, baby. Whoo, Lord, it is billionaire level. Good example, St. Vincent's. You guys may remember this. Some people here may remember St. Vincent's was over there on 7th. It got bought uh, and destroyed. It got demolished in uh, the late, what is that, the 2010s? Not the aughts, but the 10s. And it was replaced with this which now has the most expensive place in New York at 45 million for a penthouse. Damn, pretty nuts. And this is all very depressing, so uh, moral of the story, let's wrap this thing up, is uh, let's just all go home and look at dogs. <laughs> you know, that's really, that's really the only hope we have, baby, that's it. Ain't nothing we can do about it. <laughs> all right, well, here's the deal, guys. We have made it to our next comedian. We're flying through this. You guys enjoying yourself so far? Yeah. 